Hello, this is LJ Boffel, and this will be a short video on file management practices. Uh, even though we'll be using Microsoft Windows Operating Systems File Management Program, the skills are transferable to other operating systems like the Macs, Finder, whatever Linux uses, and even Android and iPhone file management. The practices is what we're going to focus on here, but we're using File Manager. So what we're going to do is in the Windows operating system, we're going to go to the start and we're going to search for File Manager. And we're not going to find anything except the 7-zip File Manager, which we don't want. This is because several years ago, Microsoft changed the File Manager to File Explorer, which you can see up here. And that is because they were changing a lot of their uh, layouts to mimic web pages. And they wanted File Explorer and Internet Explorer to have that sort of shared name. So this is what we've got. This is the File Explorer. The File Explorer comes with um, potentially several panes. I have uh, three of them open at this point. I have one where I get to view all the um, directories, the folders, the subfolders. And then I have the area where I can see files inside of folders. And then I have sort of a preview area that will tell me a little bit more about the files. You can make changes to that by, um, you know, for instance, you could change what you see here by changing your view to extra large icons or to a detail list or back to where I had it as tiles. And in any given file directory, and folder and subfolder, you can have the view be different in there. And in fact, sometimes the operating system will have specific views set up for specific types of media. So there will be different uh, uh, layouts for looking at movies or music playlist directories than there will be for document directories. Now, most of the stuff that's going to be in your file manager comes with the operating system and or other programs that you install, whether it's a word processing program, a game, a media player, uh, or anything else. A lot of these things are just built right in and you just leave them alone and you use them for what they can offer. So for instance, the quick access lets you put the equivalent of a shortcut of favorite files up here so that you don't have to go looking around in your hard drive for those directories all the time. You could just say, you know, I really want to see what videos that I'm currently working on and I want to just click on a file and get right to them. That's what the quick access is for. Creative Cloud Files, I happen to have an Adobe Creative Suite in here, so this shows up. It won't show up for most people. You may see something that shows up for Microsoft uh, OneDrive. You have a network, so if you are on a network with other people, like in your household or in your neighborhood or in the office, this may show other things. In here, it's more of a placeholder than anything. A lot of these things here above the actual hard drive information are things that are put in by the operating system to help automatically sort some things for you without you having to touch them. So documents, this is one thing we want to take a look at in a moment. But um, downloads, for instance, when you're in a browser, whether it's in um, the Microsoft Edge or Opera or Google Chrome, or uh, Safari, basically you'll have a downloads folder and it will likely be that your browser will default downloading files to the downloads folder unless you tell your browser that you want them to go somewhere else. And your downloads will end up having a few files in them. You want to make a habit as part of your file management practice to check your downloads at least once every week or two and to delete anything you don't need in there. You may have downloaded a file folder uh, that's an executable file to uh, add a new game to your computer. Well, once the computer has the game on it and you're playing it, you no longer need the original executable file or whatever installation file you got and you could delete it. It's easy to delete things from the download folder. You can right click and find delete, get rid of it. You can also use your delete key on your keyboard. Now, this is a, a useful time to do a quick refresh on the uh, recycle bin. I just deleted something from here. So what I'm going to do is minimize this, take a look at my recycle bin, 
there's all sorts of things in here that I've actually been working on, but this is the thing I just deleted. So if I really decided I wanted it, I would be able to, within viewing my recycle bin, to restore the file. Now we'll go back over here, and there's the file. It's been restored. So these things kind of work interchangeably. So the download, downloads folder is your friend, but only as long as you don't let it get too big, as long as you look at the downloads folder every week or two, and you make a decision on, do I need to keep this file and store it somewhere else? Music, pictures, videos, this happens to be a place where if you do uh, some sort of pictures or video downloads, they will often, if they are using an application you um, download, say you're using YouTube Downloader, it will automatically want to put the, uh, the videos over here in its own subfolder. That sort of thing can happen. But what we're most interested in right now is our hard drive. Now, my computer, like many computers, has only one hard drive, and it tends to default to C. I don't remember back in the day why they made the decisions to name a drive starting with C instead of A or B. I think the A or B were for other purposes originally. So C is what your normal hard drive is. Some computers will have more than one hard drive, such as a solid state drive where they run all the um, operating system and maybe your big productivity applications, and then a separate non-solid state drive where you might accumulate information like your playlists, your pictures, movies. You might actually store a lot of your documents, your portfolio information on there, and you may even choose, if it's big enough, to actually run the executable programs from your games from there. Because often a solid state drive, being more expensive, may be only 512 megabytes and then the non-SSD drives might be one or two terabytes. But in this case, this is a one drive computer. It's my C drive. I have a folder just for me because when you look down at the right hand side here, there are tons and tons of things in here that again are put in by the operating system and or the applications that you install that make their own folders for their own files that allows their own settings, their own environment, their own temp files, all sorts of stuff in there. We're not going to go into all of this. This tends to be a little bit more advanced, and this is something you would really want to take time to learn. But what we're going to do for this particular video is look at how you would create a new file directory and then some subfolders for it, and then look at how to put files in there and some naming protocols for your files. This is just general file management for the average person who's going to be needing it in school, needing it in the workplace, and needing to be able to recognize it in the workplace. Because when you get to a job, they're going to have their own file naming protocols, their own directories and subdirectories, areas where you will have access and areas that you won't. So what we're going to do is start by, in the C drive, we're going to create a new directory. Basically, a directory and a folder tend to be considered almost interchangeable terms, but it, the directory is basically designed in order to have lots of folders and subfolders and files in it, sort of the very top level. This is my C drive, but it's also the C directory. This would be my AA Lisa. Yes, that's my first name for LJ. Uh, my, my own directory of all sorts of files um, and from basically folders, subfolders that I have in it. So we're going to basically create something new, a new folder in the C drive. New folder. Now you could click that from up here in this bar. You can also right click and scroll down until you see new and see a pop out for folder. Or you could right click on the white space of the work area over here and click new folder. But what I've got here is a new folder that needs to be named. All of this happens to be a bunch of files that are part of the C drive. So I just ignore those. They're blue because they're system files. New folder. You could click twice kind of slowly so that you can rename it. Or you can right click and look for a rename. What I want to name this is school because I'm going to assume that this folder will be for learners that might be in a classroom. And here's the thing. If I name that school, it's going to be all the way down here. Up here, you can see that AA Lisa is nearer the top. 
the folder above it starts with a number and the other two start with a symbol and happen to be um, uh, 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 operating system folders. So nothing can go above these, but this is the very first folder. So what I'm going to do is go back down to school. I'm going to right click on it and rename and then just type AA school. I've actually never tried typing the um, number sign. I suspect the computer would freak out, so we'll just do that. Here's AA school. Now, if you were taking classes, this is where you would then put in a folder for each course, for each quarter. So um, I'm going to create a new folder, and I'm going to call it Course 1. And I might put Spring you know, 2023 to help identify it. And then I might make another folder called Course 2 Spring 2023. Now you might wonder why if I'm teaching specific courses at a college that I'm not actually just naming those courses here. This video needs to last for probably a year or two, so it's better not to refer to a very specific course. But say we're all in course one. We're going to double click on that and we'll enter here where we can make new folders that will serve the work we're going to do in the course. Now let's say the course is going to have some images the instructor will give you. They may have some example files they will give you that you can look at. You may want to do some research and store that in an area other than the assignments and then you're going to have assignments. So you kind of want to think about that when you're going to set up your file directories. So here what we're going to do is create something called images and spell it images. You can also it not only you know right click and get the rename, but if you click twice carefully, not, not double click, just click twice with just a brief pause, then you could get in there and you could change the name. You can do it all caps, all lower. Um, uh, uh, actually, maybe to make this more readable for everyone, I'll do an, a capital I. Here's images. Now I might want to go in here and type in research. I might want to come in here and type examples. And then, based on whatever your instructor's plan for providing the work to you is and having the work come in, you might make folders that reference that. So for instance, in my own class, I use a learning management system, and in that I tend to break the modules up by week. But I don't call them by week, I call them sections. So in this course, I might say, okay, I'm going to have assignments in section one, section two, section three, etc. So we're going to try section one. Now I don't want to have to type that over and over again, so what I'm going to do is I'm going to right click, I'm going to copy on it, click away from the folder, right click, and paste. There we go. Then if I click twice, carefully like that, then I can change this to section two. And you could actually copy, you're going to use the, the shortcuts of on a Windows, uh, Control C and Control V for copy and paste. So I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to click Control C, then I'm going to collect, I'm going to press Control V, and I can make several copies like this. So I might come down here and make this section three, section four. I'm not going to do all of the sections. And then, gosh, I've got a couple things I don't want. You could um, select those and then you can delete them. So this is a way of organizing your file folders to make things useful. Now, um, oh, and one other thing you might want to create is something like if your instructor is going to give you, say, a zip file of data files, you might want to create a file for that. So I might call this data files. Now, why is this important? We're going to go and follow up on my example up here from Quick Access. My Quick Access, I created an examples folder. And I have a bunch of files in here that I would like to play with in this and another example. I'm going to click this Need for More Files zip, copy this, I'm going to, and I've used the Control C for that. I'm going to go find my school folder, Course 1, Data Files, and paste it in here. Then I can unzip this file and have the unzipped files along with the original zip file left in here. Now, one more thing I want to take a look at. 
and we'll go back up to examples. And I wanted to share with you some tips on understanding the file extensions of files and also the naming protocol of files. So for instance in here, these things mean something to me only because they were in specific directories and subdirectories where I just got them from. Now, uh, I, on the surface, I don't remember what add 06 is. It's just one of six or eight or ten adds that I had graphics of in another directory. Same thing with CARB. Um, Excel charts is a little more helpful. Obviously, it's an Excel file, probably, and it's got charts in it. Lorem ipsum text, blah, blah, blah. So here's what we've got. Let's first talk file extensions. Extensions are the form of the file that the native application names it as to help denote the fact that it belongs to that application. So if it's a .docx file like this, it will belong to Microsoft Word. If it's a .xlsx file like this one, it will um, be an Excel file from Microsoft Excel. Oh, and by the way, this is one area where you don't actually get to make, use anything to make the area look bigger. You might have to go, if, if this is too small for you to see on your computer, you may have to look at your accessibility settings to see if you can have some control over making the names of things in programs like this bigger. But I can't actually make this screen bigger for you. I am sorry. This here is an example of a GIF file, which is a type of graphic. And this is a different type of graphic, a JPEG file. And then I think there's a third type of graphic in here. No, there isn't. Okay. But lorem ipsum text. This is a text file that was created in probably something like Notepad that has no formatting whatsoever. It's just kind of raw text. It could be raw numbers. Uh, sometimes a raw numbers file, file will be dot C S V, which is comma, um, uh, C S V comma supported values, <laughs> comma, comma spaced values. This is a zip file. It means that it's a file that has files inside of it that makes it portable for uploading to a SharePoint if you want to load a whole bunch of files at one time, or uploading to another website so that somebody can download it and get several files at once, or sending by email. This is something a number of instructors may ask you to do, is they may have several Excel files for you to work on. They want to look at each of the files, but they want one submission packet, which would be your zip file. This .pptx file is a PowerPoint file. There will be some others for programs that come up in maths, that may come up in other operating systems, and there are tons of file extensions that will never mean anything to you because they do belong to the operating system and have to do with proprietary things that make the operating system or the application files and environment work. But this just sort of gives you a taste of what that looks like. Now, finally, let's take a quick look at file naming protocol. I mentioned to you, I don't remember what these are for, specifically now that I look at them as add 06, card 01. I know this is the lorem ipsum text, which means that if I were to double click and open it, it would open in something like, this is Crimson Editor, which is another notepad type tool I use for coding. And it shows that this is a kind of some funky looking text that I could use as a placeholder. I could go in and try to open up this file uh, for PowerPoint. Let's double click it. And if the file extension is associated with the file, it will, and you have that um, program on your computer, you'll be able to open it like that. You probably know a lot of this already, but sometimes it's helpful to hear it explained. So this is clearly some sort of design content for PowerPoint, but I don't know what that means. Word text basics. Well, this is for an assignment, but I'm not really sure. And it's a copy of the file, not the original file. Hmm. So um, let's take a look at this one here. This one is one that is uniquely named based on instructions from an instructor. And it could tell you what this file is three or four quarters later if you don't remember, other than the fact that you haven't noted what program it's in or what's in the assignment or what class it's for. But here it's indicating this particular file is for chapter seven, working on text basics activities, and then my last name. And it happens to be a Microsoft 
word file. That's an example of file naming protocol. If I were going to go back and look at this, I'm going to double click and see this happens to actually be an example of three postcards that I did as a graphic designer. And I called it this because it was going to be placed somewhere on my website portfolio. And it made sense to me at that time. If I were going to redo the name of this file again, I might call it something like um, example ads. Uh, 2011, you know, something like that. That would make more sense. So that's what is meant by file naming protocol. At this point, let's just take a couple more looks in here. File area of your file manager. There are all sorts of things you could get in here which uh, may or may not be applicable depending on whether you've clicked on a file or whether you have it. So for instance, I'm still clicked on add 06. And so Windows is trying to give me some contextual ideas of what I can do with it. Do I want to edit the file? Let's go back over here. File. Do I want to edit the file? Do I want to print it? Do I want to edit with the um, Microsoft uh, Windows Paint uh, utility? Do I want to set it as a desktop background? Do I want to open it? Do I want to create a new video? Wow, there's all sorts of things. And there's all sorts of other things that appear in here that may be specific to my computer based on programs I have that you don't have. Most of this you won't need to worry about until you decide you want to spend more time learning about computers, but that could be pretty helpful. Now, if I click away from the file and I press file, then it's going to have a lot fewer things for me to choose from here. Edit, same sort of thing. It allows you to copy and uncopy things, but here I don't have anything to copy, so I could undo an existing copy. View, this gives you the choice of how you want to view your, your thing, your, your um, file manager areas. You could also, um, let's see if we can do any oh, folder options. Folder options is the equivalent of preferences, and what you do in here will affect the folder you're in. So, for instance, say in this particular folder I wanted to view it a certain way. I might say I don't, I want to uncheck a lot of these things, and then I would hit apply and OK. So say maybe I really did not want to see the file extensions. Let's let's take a look at that. Um, file extensions. This is actually an important thing because you might need to do it. Uh, do, do, do. All right, hide extensions for known file types. You may actually get into your file manager and they have this checked. Apply, OK. Now we don't see any file extensions. So if you were going along with this, you'd be sitting here wondering, why can't I see any of this information? She's telling me she's, it's on her screen. It's not on mine. You can go to Tools, go to Folder Options, view because it's something you need to view in the folder. You can scroll down and look for that. Where did it go? It's hiding in here. Hide extensions for known file types. You uncheck it. Click apply. OK. Hey, what happened? That is not cool. Let's try this again. I must have clicked something wrong. It always happens when I'm doing a video. View. OK. Hide. Yeah, I want to unclick that. I want to apply that. It's not showing up there. Click OK. Oh, and there we go. <laughs> that is the result I wanted. And on that happy note, I'm going to end this video. I hope this was helpful for you. Thank you very much.